Hi, Jim. Today, we're going to be still talking about the recovery from Hurricane Helene. My neighbor across the street is a lovely, lovely guy, and he has been, he, he really likes cutting by enormous logs. So he has been over here just doing this stuff like crazy. Look at how big this tree is, and then we'll get right to the generator. Get this monster. Let me uh, put a tape measure in here and see how big this thing really is. Okay, I don't think I'm all the way to the other end yet, but let's see, we're almost five feet in diameter. That is a monster. After Hurricane Helene hit, our power was off for quite a while and we relied on this generator that I bought new in 1999 when I was doing a movie called Scorpion King. We were building a bunch of sets out in the uh, in areas that we didn't have power so I needed to have a generator so I could keep the crew going and a refrigerator going and all that. So what I did ahead of time is we put a special circuit on the house where I can go right from my 240 volt 30 amp outlet on my generator right into the house. And right next to our regular panel, we have this generator panel and it allows me to switch from line power, which is incoming from the city or the county, to my generator or off. And that way when I'm on my generator, and if the power comes back on from the city, it won't backfeed. And I was uh, I selected these six. So we have our water pump on one of them. Um, we have, because we're on a well, um, we have our refrigerator and our freezers and that kind of stuff on them. So I'm not powering the whole house with this, but it was just really helpful to have this when the power was out for a long time. So now the only real reason that this thing has continued to be useful and work for 25 years is because every time I'm done using it, like today, I don't think we're going to be using it anymore for a while, so I'm going to put it away carefully. And in order to do that, I'm going to start it up, and I'm going to turn the gasoline, which is currently on, I'm going to turn it off after I've got it running and a little bit warmed up, and then once the fuel is off, I'll let this run until it runs out. That's draining the gas out of the carburetor. And then what I'll do is I'll disconnect the hose back here, and I will drain all the fuel out of this fuel tank, and i got to get a new gas cap for it. That way there's no fuel in this whatsoever. Next time I want to use it, I have to refill this with fresh gas, and then it'll start right up. This time, I'm going to go a little bit extra, and I'm going to change the oil on the engine, and I might even put in a new spark plug, and, uh, and it looks like my frame has cracked here, and so I'll clean all this up, wire brush it off, get it in good position again, and re-weld it, and then put it away, and next time I want to use it, it'll be perfectly ready to go. And there we have it. So that means my carburetor is pretty much empty. <clears throat> and now I'm going to let this cool down before I monkey around with the uh, hose here and start draining the fuel tank. But you'll see that this hose is cracking. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this hose. This one looks okay. I'll probably replace this fuel filter as well while I'm here. And then we're going to open this up and have a look at the air filter. Ooh. That looks pretty good. Yeah, 
after closer inspection, you can see the pre-filter's a little bit bad, but not too bad, really. And yeah, the paper filter's not terrible by any means either. But I just ordered uh, two, uh, a replacement for this pre-filter and uh, two replacements for this paper error filter. So I'll have a spare for next time. And I think it was uh, like $15 on Amazon for two. I'll be here in a couple days. Okay, so for this collapsed piece here, it's broken completely off. You can see it's resting down here on the board. And on this side that has not collapsed, it's still up quite a ways. So I'm going to uh, stack some sort of spacers underneath here to get this back up to the height it's supposed to be. And I'm going to grind all this paint off in some of these old welds and get it all flattened out and happy with how it's sitting and then re-weld it with my Vulcan MIG. So I have a new pre-element uh, and a new paper element. So we'll be replacing it in this housing here in a sec. And I still don't know why rodents chewed on my old gas cap, but that's our new one. And I cut a small piece of the line coming from my fuel tank into my engine on this end. Uh, I'm going to replace this whole thing. And I got this nice uh, larger clear uh, fuel filter. And there is a little arrow on here somewhere that shows that the fuel direction is this way, which is how we have it oriented. So this thing, it's just a matter of replacing that, and then I have to press this green part out and put my fresh stuff in. I'm gonna take two hands. Okay, so on my old one, you can see that this is the top we were looking at before. This side has like a mesh. That's the side that goes, it says right on this one, this one it doesn't, but the mesh side, uh, they call it screen, goes towards the paper part of the element. So now that I've got this in the housing, it just goes on the paper element like that. And then we can pop this in here and I don't think it matters. I think it'll fit in either orientation in the air box here. So I have put on my new hose and my new hose clamps and my new filter. And I decided to take the bowl, which is right here. Here it is. Uh, I took the bowl off the bottom of the carburetor. It's held on with just this one bolt right in that center hole. And make sure and drain out any little bit of gas that's still left in there. And there was some. And then I wiped out the inside of my float so it's nice and clean, or my float bowl. And I did get some bad stuff out of there. Not lots, but it was worth cleaning. So now I'm going to put that back together and our carburetor is completely bone dry. So is our gas tank. So I'm going to put my new gas cap on and then we'll get on to dropping the oil out of here and it's got a dipstick on both sides drain port on both sides not sure really why but once it's drained out i think the other side i can get it with less of a mess uh there's no oil filter in this particular engine so we don't have to mess with that and then i'm going to put in some 1030 and you fill it until uh it starts to overflow and come out one of these fill holes, and then that's full. Nice. Okay, so now I also uh, can't forget about the spark plug. So you can see it down in here. I've already pulled the spark plug wire off of it. It just pulls right off real easy. And you can see it down in there. And it's a 13 sixteenths deep socket so let me pull this one out have a look see what it uh, tells us 
Okay. Oopsie. It's not 13 sixteenths. My new plug that I ordered blindly is 13 sixteenths, but obviously it's not at all the correct plug. So it ended up being five eighths. Sorry, five eighths. So anyway, I don't have the replacement plug on hand, but this plug looks, it looks fine to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this plug right back in and we'll replace it next time. I'll probably grab that crush washer off the other plug, but yeah, I'm just going to put this one back in onto the oil. All right, here's my setup. A little bit of an offset funnel there, right into a coffee can. And I was wrong about the level. You don't fill it until it's overflowing here. Um, that would make it overfilled. You can see the full hash mark there. So we'll just replace it and check the uh, level a few times until we can get it to where it's supposed to be. The oil that's in there does not look bad. And that's a good thing, and that's because I'm a good generator owner, and I change the oil once in a while. So let me take this guy out of here. All right, I've let it drain for about uh, eh, probably 15, 20 minutes. There isn't really hardly anything coming out anymore. And now we know that the exact correct amount, because... The dipstick had the right level on it before we drained it is one full coffee can so i'm going to recycle this uh use the oil responsibly and then i will use the clean down coffee can to measure exactly how much i need to pour in here and i'll use my funnel again and pour it in through my dipstick hole well i spilled a little bit but I wiped it all up pretty quickly, and now my oil level is at exactly the right level. You have to screw the dipstick in uh, all the way in order to get the accurate reading, and it's perfect. So all that's left is repairing the frame here, and then I think I'm going to permanently attach it to this uh, dolly here. So, And then I'll use a rope so it's easier to pull it around. And uh, after I get done welding this, and I decided to reinforce some other ones, and uh, then I'm going to have to prime and paint at least where I've ground the paint off, or, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'll paint the whole thing. <laughs> well, there we have it, all welded up, custom paint job. Boy, that's a cool paint job, huh? Uh, held down permanently on this dolly with some aircraft surplus hardware and a nice little uh, rope to help pull this thing along because it's now permanently attached to this four-wheel furniture dolly. Uh, 25 years in, probably going to make it another 25, let's hope. Keep them up. Thanks for watching.